So current assets are the lifeblood of the business as we will understand as we move forward. Let me start with the very first current asset mentioned in Opto's balance sheet. So what is the first current asset mentioned in Opto's balance sheet? It's called inventories. Inventories are basically stores of raw materials and finished and semi-finished products that are waiting to be sold and are lying with the company on the date of preparation of the balance sheet. As you can see in Schedule 14, now if we were to go to Schedule 14 of uh, OptoCircuit's balance sheet, uh, uh, as you can see there, a large part which is almost 80%, so large part of this uh, inventory is that the company has is made up of raw materials. So as you see, raw materials are the largest. So the company has given the breakup of three kind of inventories it has. The first is raw materials, the second in work in progress, which means the products which uh, are work in progress but have not been finished um, on the date of preparation of the balance sheet. And the third are finished goods which are lying in the company stores uh, or go downs. So uh, if you see 80% of the inventories are raw materials, so which are raw materials which the company has bought and at the date of preparation of the balance sheet, they are lying in the company's stores go downs and have not been converted into finished goods. So 80% of uh, its inventories are made up of raw materials and the remaining is in the form of finished and semi-finished products that are waiting to be sold. Now increase in raw material inventories from one year to another or one quarter to another. So if you were to look at uh, after circuits, there has been a slight increase in the amount of raw material that it has on its um, uh, balance sheet which might mean that the company has decided to stock up in anticipation of a rise in its raw material costs. Uh, so what a lot of companies do just because they anticipate a sharp rise in uh, the cost of raw materials, they stock up, of an, uh, stock up on a lot of inventory of raw materials. In case of Opto, uh, there has been a marginal increase which doesn't mean that the company is stocking up uh, simply because the company uh, is uh, seeing an increase in raw material inventories because it is also seeing an increase in sales so which is a normal course normal business course and does not really mean that the company is worried about rising raw material prices and that's the reason it's stocking up on raw material inventories uh, but in cases where you see a sharp rise in raw material inventories from one year to another or for, from one quarter to another it might mean that the company has decided to stock up in anticipation of a rise in its raw material cost but this is not really helpful in the long run because the company has to still convert these raw materials into finished goods and sell them as quickly as possible. Indeed, one of the reasons Japanese car makers are the most efficient worldwide is because of their inventory management. They are man able to manage their inventories much faster in a much better manner than the US or European counterparts. So an increase in raw material inventories usually means business is speeding up and this will be reflected in future revenues and profits. Now. More interesting are changes in inventories of semi-finished and finished goods. Here, these are the numbers, work in progress, inventories and finished goods, which are more important here uh, for companies like Opto or any manufacturing companies. Because if they are increasing at a faster rate, which means the company is going through either a, a, a period of slack where it's not being able to sell its products. And that's the reason they are piling up as inventories. There are enough examples of how considerable finished goods inventories can forecast downward earnings and surprises. Just look at balance sheets of real estate and capital good companies in 2006-7 and 7-8 and you will see rising inventories of finished goods. Then see what has happened to these companies sales and profits since then. They will actually come down. Anyways, inventories are especially important to watch in manufacturing and retail firms which are saddled with large amount of physical inventory. The value of inventories shown on a company's balance sheet should be taken with a grain of salt. If inventory levels are growing much faster than a company's sales, it may be making or buying more goods than it can sell, which means a company is buying, making or buying more goods than it can sell. And that's the reason uh, its inventory is going at a faster rate. It's not being able to sell as fast as it is buying in terms of raw material, finished goods, semi-finished goods. That may force the company to lower its prices because if there are unsold goods lying in the go downs, and the company is desperate to make sales grow, it will resort to lowering its prices to clear off its inventory, which results, which would result in lower profits for each item sold and lower profitability for the company. In some cases, it may have to reduce prices to levels below the value of the inventory itself, resulting in losses. Additionally, inventories tie up capital. So this is the biggest problem of having a lot of inventories on your balance sheet. They tie up precious cash. The cash that was used to create inventory can't be used for anything else until it's sold. 
so until unless you convert your raw materials to finished goods or you sell or you complete your work in progress and sell that product or you sell your finished goods you really can't free the money the cash that's stuck up in your inventories so that's another important thing for investors to monitor is how fast a company is able to sell its inventory so how do you know that now one key ratio that will tell you how slow or fast a company is able to sell its inventory is called the inventory days so there's a ratio called so let me change the color so there's a formula there's a, a ratio called inventory days which will help you so uh, a ratio call inventory days which will tell you how fast or how slow a company is able to convert inventory into sales now the formula for calculating inventory days is simple it's inventories that is seen in the balance sheet upon sales into 365 if you remember in your in our analysis of liability side uh, we calculated number called creditor days or payable days in the same way it was creditors upon sales into 365 so in case of inventory days it's simply inventories upon sales into 365 so in opto opto's case the number will be so what's the number for opto for inventories if you see the number of inventories the number for inventories 511 crores so 511 crore and uh, we know from the profit and loss account that sales is 2356 crore so you have 511 crore divided by 2356 crore into 365 and if you were to do a calculation on a calculator you will get to number of 79 so 79 days is the inventory days for up to circuits if you were to see so let me show you the historical trend for inventory days for up to circuits so if you were to see the inventory days which is mentioned here the number actually sharply rose because the company was also seeing a fast growth in its business so it had to stock up inventory of raw material finished goods semi finished goods on a very regular basis in its balance sheet uh, and the number actually grew at a very fast rate but when slow down hurt uh, the uh, uh, raw material inventory the company actually reduced its intake of raw material inventory and uh, uh, the inventory days also fell down now again uh, with acquisition in europe in us uh, the company has seen a higher inventory days because there were some working capital issues in um, those acquired companies and again uh, in the latest year the inventory days have fallen uh, to uh, 79 days uh, in other words the company has seen its inventory turn into cash faster if you see the long term average the company has seen its inventory turn into cash faster over the past few years except some occasional hiccups like in 2011 uh which which was due to inventory issues at its, at its acquired companies that i talked uh, talked about now if you were to see the breakup of optos inventories so if i were to look at i've actually created a breakup of optos circuits inventories so as we saw on the balance sheet there are three breakups the first is raw materials the second is work in progress and the third is finished goods so if you were to see the breakup in the long term in the past 10 years 10 12 years the uh, ratio of raw material as a percent of total inventories has been on a very high side which is like 90 95% but if you were to see the last 2 years the ratio of raw materials to total inventories has actually come down why because the ratio of work in progress and finished goods if you see these numbers if you see 71 crores 84 crores 22 crores 30 crores from like 0 and 20 crores they have risen so you can see a sharp rise here sharp rise here because largely due to slow down the company has not been able to sell an entire uh, amount of its finished goods the company has held back on completing its finished uh, raw work in progress as to finished goods because it was anticipating a slow down in demand so uh, if you see uh, this number uh, rise in these numbers is what concerns me here so watch out for these numbers these are important numbers in case of opto circuits and these are important numbers in case of other companies as well if you see a sharp rise in uh, uh, work in progress inventories and finished good inventories 
uh, know for sure that the company is anticipating a slowdown in its demand uh, for its products in the future and that's the reason uh, there are unsold inventories uh, lying or for example comp- people are not really buying stuff which the company has produced and that's the reason there are unsold inventories lying in the go downs overall inventory days of 90 days or lower are comfortable levels so if the company is able to turn around its inventory into cash in less than 90 days uh, i would be uh, fine with that number and this is the case for most companies and the lower the number the better it is and just to give an fr reference point uh, like inventory days for uh, opto circuit that we saw was like 79 days or if you were to take a last 5 year average it was around 94 days uh the inventory days for hul which is hindustan liver is just 40 days again because the company is a fast moving consumer good company it's able to turn around its inventory at a very fast rate and inventory turnover days for bhel is 105 days so in that terms uh, uh opto circuits is in largely a very uh, uh, is largely in a comfortable position as far as inventory days are concerned after inventories let's move to another very important uh, uh, line item under current assets which is trade receivables right think of receivables as bills that a company sends its customers for goods or services it has provided but for which the customer has not yet paid but is expected to pay within the next one year in simpler words these are sales or trade receivables represent sales that have already been recorded on the income statement but that haven't been paid for yet with cash So as a consumer you add to a company's trade receivables when purchasing a product and paying for it by check at the end of the month generally trade receivables or account receivables as they are also known are shown as net amount of what a company expects to ultimately collect so this is a net amount of the money which the company expects to collect from its customers in the future because some customers are likely to not pay they are likely to default so this is a net amount of what the company expects what's the total trade receivables minus whatever the company expects to not collect it shows as a net trade receivable if you were to look at let's look at uh, the uh, schedule so this this schedule 15 which shows trade receivables right so if you see uh, there's something called as uh, debts due for a period exceeding 6 months so these are trade receivables and out of that these are considered good which means these this is the amount which the company expects to surely receive from its customers but here there are some other debts which again are trade receivables and there's a component of considered doubtful so these are the doubtful debts which the company thinks that it, it may not receive from its customers in the future and it has also provided for provision for doubtful debts so which the company has provided a provision for doubtful debts which means the debt that the amount the payment that it expects to not receive from its customers in the future because they are likely to default so if you see the net amount is what the company carries as receivables on its uh, on its balance sheet as we can see in opto's case the company has created such a provision the year ended 2012 while the same did not exist here. so if you can see the provision has been in there in the balance sheet of the latest year but it was not there last year which means that the amount of default from company's customers has actually increased or it 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 has appeared in the latest year while it was not there and these are all ills of a slowdown where companies actually uh, do not receive money from customers because the customers default or they really don't want to play pay so as an investor it is important for you to keep an eye on trade receivable in relation to a company sales so always look at trade receivable in relation to a company sales if trade receivables are growing much faster than sales it generally means a company isn't doing an ideal job collecting the money it is owed so if uh, if you see this number of trade receivables which is rising faster than the company's sales over a period of long term uh, 5 6 10 years then you are rest assured that the company is not doing a good job of collecting money from its customers and this could potentially be a sign of trouble because the company may be offering loser credit terms to increase its sales but it may have difficulty ultimately collecting the cash it owed so it's uh, to just tide over a slow down the company may be offering loser credit terms which means it it it's ready to accept money whenever it's made available by its customers but ultimately it's facing difficult to, to collect even that money so it's a double whammy for the company this particularly happens in retailing and automobile industries during slack seasons in retail business for example there is this is an equivalent of the end of season sales and the dumping of unfashionable merchandise 
Or take for example automobile companies that come out with heavy discounts at the end of every calendar year. Just because few people buy automobiles during December, they know that despite buying in December say 2011, theirs will be a 2011 model that will look old in 2012 or 2013. So automobile companies literally dump their products at higher discounts during the end of year and also offer buyers easy credit terms. This increases their trade receivables at a faster pace than the sales. Whatever the cause, major increase in trade receivables as against the increase in sales is a dangerous sign. Conversely, if trade receivables are growing much slower than sales, the firm's credit terms may be too stringent, which may impact sales. After all, we as consumers don't like buying from people who want all the money now. We all want to defer our payments and thus opt for easy EMIs. Now, here's one key ratio that will tell you how slow or fast a company is able to receive money from its debtors. It's called receivable days. So, we studied credit days earlier. We studied uh, inventory days just now, and the third item which can tell you how slow or fast a company is receiving money from its debtors. it's called the debtor days so it's called the debtor days and how do you calculate debtor days the formula remains same trade receivables upon sales into 365 right So in Opto case, Opto's case, if you were to see the number, the number for trade receivables is eight forty six crore, right? Eight forty six crore. So, which will be eight forty six crore divided by sales of two three five six six into three sixty five, and if you were to calculate this number, the result is one thirty one. days so while the company is able to turn around its inventory into cash in 79 days its turn around is able to turn around its debtor in only 131 days only in the sense it takes a long period of time which is around 4 months which is a high number if you were to see now let's like, let's look at the historical trend of uh, receivable days or inventory days for opto circuits so if you were to see the historical days or receivable days They were pretty high. They have been pretty high at one fifty five, one fifty six, one thirty, one ninety eight, one seventy six again, because of uh, a growth period. The company was uh, also offering loser terms to uh, its uh, d- buyers. So uh, n- uh, while on one hand its sales were growing faster, on the other hand its receivable dates were also uh, rising at a fast pace, which most investors did not notice. Uh, after a uh, declining to 149 in say 2010 again because of acquis- acquisitions and problems in uh, debtor management in its subsidiaries the company again saw an increase in debtor days here to 156 but again uh, in latest year it has it has been able to tide over the concern and slightly reduce its debtor days again to 131 here again uh, like inventory days any number above 190 days or 3 months would make me uncomfortable So while on inventory days, if you were to see inventory days for uh, Opto, uh, I am fine seeing a 79 days number, but as far as in data days, the number at 131 is a bit concerning for me. A company like HUL has data days for less than 15 days, while for BHEL the number is around 200 days. Again, the number for BHEL might, while looking too high, may not be as bad as compared to say Opto's 131 days. Why? Because BHL is in the heavy engineering industry and in that industry it takes a lot of time between preparing the invoice and then transporting the machineries which are heavy which takes a long period of time and then ultimately installing them and then receiving the final payments so the entire cycle is too long for that industry and that's the reason you see a higher data days of say around 200 for a company like BHL so it's important to compare receivable days within an industry and then decide whether the number is good or bad but as a general rule of thumb more than 90 days is uncomfortable and the higher the number the worse it is yeah from data days let's move on to the next item on the current assets which is the darling of everyone the cash and cash equivalents most value investors in fact look for first uh this this is the item that they look for first when they glance at a company's balance sheet 
This line item, which is cash and cash equivalents, doesn't necessarily refer to actual bills sitting in a cash register or vault. Generally, cash is held in low-risk, highly liquid investments, such as money market funds. These holdings can be liquidated quickly with little or no price risk. And this is considered money that can be used for any purpose the company wants. So cash is something which can be considered as a money which the company can use anytime or for any purpose it wants. I believe that Indian companies have lived through a long period in which cash acted like a ballast or a device that limits the amount of current in an electric circuit. In the same way, too much of cash has been seen as retarding a company's growth or progress. Take a look at Infosys, whom investors have cursed and blamed for having too much cash on its balance sheet. Now I think we are going into an environment where cash will be king and thus companies that have a lot of it, their own cash, will be respected the most. You see, one of the critical elements in business or investment success is staying power. I often speak of a six foot tall man who drowned crossing a river that was five feet deep on an average. In the same way, companies have to be able to get through the tough times and cash is one of the things that can make the difference. As far as Opto is concerned, the company has too little cash. If you see, they have just 174 crores of cash. There's much bigger amount uh, of 4, 446 crore lying as short term loans and advances, 846 crores as trade receivables, 511 crores as inventories and the cash amount is just 174 crores lying in their balance sheet. And this amount is actually reduced from 234 crore last year, which, which makes me even more concerned. If you were Opto, this is like saying that despite earning higher salary in 2012, so for Opto, the sales increased magnificently in 2012, but the bank savings were lower in 2011 than in 2011, simply because the company consumed more cash in 2012 than it earned. This indicates a weak financial situation for Opto. As we discussed a bit earlier, a large part of Opto's cash is stuck in inventories and trade receivables. While this might give an impression that the company will receive cash when your inventories and your receivables are converted to cash, but this really happens because the company will then add new inventories and new receivables, which will continue to keep cash stuck in them. So it's very important to look at inventories and cash in relation to uh, trade receivables in relation to cash because uh, just because there are a lot of inventories and cash or, or trade receivables lying on the balance sheet does not mean that this is future cash for the company because inventories might not really turn into the desired amount of cash and even trade receivables a lot of people a lot of debtors might not really pay for us to assume 100 percent of receivables as cash in the future and what will also happen is that to continue the business the companies will continue to maintain high amount of inventory as has been the case in the past and also high amount of trade receivables and thus the fact that these uh, current assets will turn to cash in the future will remain a mirage Moving on to the second last item on current asset side, which is short term loans and advances. Uh, as seen, uh, now let's look at Schedule 17, which actually shows the short term loans and advances of uh, Opto Circuit. So if you see Schedule 17, um, short term loans and advances include uh, those given for less than a year to related parties. So the company has given loans and advances to related parties, their staff advance, advance given to staff, there's some other advances, their advances given to suppliers. There's some taxes paid in advance, so there are balances with central excise customs departments. So these are all money which the company has uh, uh, has paid uh, in advance and it expects to receive that money um, in less than one year. So these are considered short term loans and advances. From here, now let's move to the final item on the current asset side of a balance sheet which is other current assets. So while there are too many to list here, this category includes any other assets the firm may have that are expected to turn into cash within the next one year. However, some current assets will not turn into cash, the most common of which are known as prepaid expenses. Yes, so in, if, you, if you were to look at Schedule 18 for Opto, so we look at Schedule 18, you see something called as prepaid expenses, which is a majority, which is almost 100% of the total current assets that the company has. Even though it's called prepaid expense, it's actually an asset. Let me explain. For example, say Opto Circuits buys and pays up front for an insurance policy for the coming year. Now, accounting rule says that the company should record the entire payment as a prepaid expense or an asset as opposed to a normal expense on the income statement. 
because it represents something of future worth to the company so insurance payment is actually future worth to the company a full year worth of an insurance coverage right so as the year goes on the value of the asset will decrease because there's less time remaining on the policy and the amount of decrease is recorded as an expense a process known as amortization in simple words a company's prepaid expense represent cash that was paid upfront and will turn into expenses instead of cash within the next year so that was all i could explain to you as far as the current assets are concerned after explaining what exactly is uh, other current assets uh, i'm uh, i'm finishing my explanation on the current asset side uh, now there are two important ratios that uh, use current assets and which can tell you the health of a company the first ratio which use current assets is called is called the uh, current ratio so the first you have changed the color just like you know, yeah so the first ratio is called the current ratio and the formula is current assets divided by current liabilities as simple as that in octo case octo's case if you see the current assets is a figure of the current assets is figure of 2000 so here's the figure 2017 crore so your current assets is 2017 crore divided by your current liabilities if you were to see the current liabilities so your current liabilities is 1514 crore so your current liabilities 1514 crore which is 1514 4 crore which me which gives me a number of 1.3 and current assets are measured in times so 1.3x 1.3 times now is this number of 1.3 good or bad as a general rule a current ratio of 1.5 or greater suggests that the company can meet its short term operating needs sufficiently well however a higher current ratio also suggests that a company is holding assets like we have seen in the case of rise of inventories and debtors for opto instead of using them to grow the business while this is not the worst thing in the world to do it is something that could affect long term returns anyways another important ratio that involves current assets apart from current ratio is the net working capital to sales so you have the net working capital to sales ratio as the formula suggests it's net working capital upon sales now what is net working capital net working capital is nothing but the net amount of capital that the company uses in its day to day operations and it is calculated as so your net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities so your recurrent ratio was current assets upon current liabilities your net working capital is current assets minus current liabilities upon sales right so you have a figure here of 2017 of current assets minus 1514 of current liabilities divided by divided by uh 2 3 5 6 crore of sales which gives me a number of 21% it's calculated it generally the net working capital to sales is calculated as a percentage this is a comfortable number overall as it indicates that the company requires which is opto requires just 20 rupees 20 as working capital uh, net working capital for every rupees 100 of sales anyways for most companies net working capital is a positive number so this uh, net working capital of current asset minus current liabilities is a positive number largely because your current assets is generally a higher figure than your current liabilities but there are some companies that can generate cash so quickly that they actually have a negative working capital which means the current asset figure companies with negative working capital you have companies with negative working capital equals to your current assets is smaller than current liabilities why because current assets for example represent your invest inventories and debtors and the company is able to receive that money as fast faster than what it has to pay to its creditors which lie in current liabilities so there's more money lie in current liabilities compared to this more money 
which is there in current assets so which is the situation of negative working capital and this is generally true of companies in the restaurant or fmcg business now if you go to a restaurant if you go to buy uh, if you go to a shop to buy some groceries or some uh, merchandise or fast moving consumer goods creams and shampoos you actually pay them in cash and the uh, retailer will also pay the company or the distributor in a very uh, in a very small number of days as can compare to this the companies which are actually manufacturing these products have to generally pay their their vendors in a long long time that's the reason they receive money fast which means their current assets is lower as compared to when they pay the money to their vendors or their uh, suppliers of raw materials that's the reason their current liabilities are greater and this is a case of negative working capital even a negative working capital is a double edged sword now it can be a sign of managerial efficiency in a business with low inventory and accounts receivable which means they operate on an almost strictly cash basis in any other situation it is a sign a company may be facing bankruptcy because there may be delays in paying the creditors so despite the fact that the current assets are lower uh, the company can be deliberately uh, increasing the days in which it pays its current liabilities or creditors because it may be facing cash crunch ultimately it may be facing a bankruptcy so you can tell it if this is the case by comparing a company's trade payables to the total inventory in the balance sheet so there's some uh, mismanagement in terms of uh, working capital you can tell it by simply comparing your trade payables to your inventory in the balance sheet anyways if you can buy a company for the value of its working capital so if the company's stock price so let me take some space here so if the company's stock price stock is trading at say 100 rupees and the net working capital on the balance sheet which means your current assets minus current liabilities say 150 rupees right which means it's a very attractive situation because you are buying something where the net working capital is 150 rupees uh and your the stock price is just 100 rupees so this is a situation called net nets this is what graham defined as a net net while valuing stocks the situations are not really prevalent anymore because you rarely find companies which are selling at less than net working capital the net working capital and if there are some companies which really sell at less than net working capital if they exist then liquidation laws will render whatever assets they have as useless which means the net nets are are not really workable situations in today's context so this brings me to the close of today's discussion on analyzing the asset side of a balance sheet now there's a joke i heard long time back about balance sheets it says there are two sides of the balance sheet the left side which is liabilities and the right side which is assets on the left side nothing is right and on on the right side nothing is left many companies you will analyze will prove this joke as true so it's important for you to be very careful while analyzing balance sheets you can tell about the health of a company by just calculating a few simple ratios like debt to equity ratio debt burden ratio which we discussed uh, discussed in the previous video inventory and debt days and working capital to sales ratio that we discussed in the current video but it's always good to do a deeper analysis to assess whether the company is really good or really bad and there is no better financial statement than the balance sheet to do this analysis so get going you have my best wishes that's all from my side for today have a nice day thank you